So, we meet again. Hi everybody. Um, we will get started at the usual time, two o'clock East Coast time. Okay. In the meantime, hope you're all having a good day. Thank you all for coming. As you file into the room, uh, um, hey, how many of you saw the movie E.T.? Did you see the movie E.T.? Remember when uh, E.T. takes his finger, hi Alana, and he takes his finger and goes like this, Grant, Grant, E.T., phone home, Peter and Ben, hi, Ian and Erica, how you doing? Touch the screen. <laughs> Hello. Phone home. Adele and Emilian from Connecticut are here. The Markwood crew, hi, touch the screen, Markwood crew. JJ, how you doing? I'm so glad you could make it. Claire and Connor checking in from Tennessee. Ashlyn and Myrtle Beach, hi. Phone home. Patrick from New York City. Uh, New York, anyway, I'm not sure if it's a city. Samik and Tanya from New Jersey, Canada. Adam from Ontario, hey. AJ and Danny from Illinois are here. And so is Robbie. Hi, Robbie. <clears throat> and I uh, hope you all are having a great day. Margaret and Marianne in Iowa. Javin and Johan. Scarlett from California. We've got a hundred of us all here already. Hannah from Park Ridge, Illinois. Ryan, Coral Springs, Florida. Rebecca in Lexington, Massachusetts. Rhea from Atlanta. Hi to all of you. West Lawn, PA, Abby, and, and oops, sorry. The Glass Gang is here, of all, as always. Uh, the Friends Group from Michigan and Phoenix from Virginia. Uh, Dearborn, Michigan. Hi, Brian. Lyra is here in New Jersey. Okay. And Billy Bob, how you doing? We'll get started in, hi, Evan, from Virginia. We'll get started in three minutes. Three. Corey, Pennsylvania. Hi. Molly, good to see you. Call your friends, Madison, Staten Island. Call your friend. You got a friend, Madison? How about you, Aditi? Uh, get, get your friends in here. Molly, you got a cousin somewhere? How about you, Carter, Hudson, Nora? You got to know, know anybody else? Bring them in. Patrick and Alex, get your friends over here. You too, Reed from New Jersey. And, and Washington Haley, or Haley in Washington. Anthony <laughs> from New Mexico. Tatiana, get your friends over here. Billy Bob, you too. No shirking. <clears throat> um, Megan and uh, Ellie are here. And uh, Haley, oh, I said that already. Uh, Lucas and Connor in Pennsylvania. And Aiden and Ariana in Pennington, New Jersey. Billy Sickles is always watching. Noel and De Declan in New York. We're going to get started in two, two minutes. Hi, Darcy. Hi, John V. Tell your friends. Phone home. Uh, Aaron from Scotch Plains. Hi. And Max in Montana. Cool. Ar Arella. Arella. Hi. A Emily. Glad you can make it. We got 129 of us now. Hi, Jim. Uh, and uh, Angela from Mississippi. Uh, Aaron from Scotch Plains. We've got lots of people here. Billy Sickles is always watching. <clears throat> this is John V is here. I'm going to take a sip. JJ. We got uh, a little more than a minute left. Philip and Joseph in Texas. Gianluca and Matteo in the house. Say my name. <laughs> you got to tell me what it is. Annabelle and Arella. 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 Uh, yay. Somebody said, yay. <laughs> My mom is Ms. Holly. Okay. Isn't she a fictional character? Hey, Zach. Uh, Jim says he has no idea how the book is going to end. Jesse Blau. Hi, Jesse. How you doing? Evelyn and Patrick are back. And Amelia and Jacob from Roselle Park are here. Uh, we got how much time? Ooh, we got a half a minute. We got 30 seconds to go. I'll just say hello to a few more people. Uh, the Druckmans, whew, it's about time you showed up. Zoe in Pittsburgh. Uh, okay, all right. Oop, 15 seconds. I better start getting nervous. <laughs> all right, okay. Oh, 10 seconds to go. All right, you're going to count it down with me? Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. It's go time, baby. Hi, everyone. Dan Gutman here. 
Uh, I'm the guy who writes the My Weird School series and other books for kids. And welcome to number 74 in our series of My Weird Read Alouds. We're going towards 100, but we're up to 74 now. And today is Friday, and you know what that means. We finish our book today. Very exciting, the book that we've been reading all week. But first, before we do that, let's do our question of the day, which comes from Liam in Madison, New Jersey. And Liam asked this question. When is the first time you met Jim? Jim Pilat, the illustrator. Well, actually, I didn't re even remember. <laughs> when Jim and I, we've only met once, one time. And I didn't remember, so I sent an email to Jim. He told me we met on January 31st, 2015, which is five years ago now. We met in Tempe, Arizona, because I was on a book tour to Tempe. And we met in a bookstore called Changing Hands Bookstore. And I happened to have a picture of the two of us on my laptop here. Let's see if you could see it. That's the day Jim and I met at Changing Hands Bookstore in Tempe, Arizona. There you go. And I hope we'll meet again sometime if I'm in Arizona or Jim is coming to the East Coast. We'll hopefully get together again. Okay, so let's get to our book of the week and finish it, which is Ms. Cuddy is Nutty. Okay, uh, and if you've been following, you know that the elementary school received a cash donation of $1 million, which they used to start their own TV station, which is really cool, so they could do the morning announcements. And uh, it's Ms. Cuddy is the sort of the digital media arts teacher who is in charge of the TV station, and she's very competitive. And when she finds out that Dirk School, the rival school, also has a TV station for their morning announcements, she wants to get higher ratings than Dirk School. And Dirk beats us, beats them all the time, over and over again. They tried everything. They tried giving AJ a co-anchor of Andrea. They tried having AJ tell jokes. They tried uh, having the parents on. They've tried everything. And that's where we left it last time with uh, all the, the parents of AJ and Ryan and the other kids coming on to try and improve the ratings. So now we're going to start with chapter 10, which is titled Sniffing Out Stories. Okay, you guys ready? Gather around your big screen TV, your laptop, your tablet, your whatever, and here we go. <clears throat> well, Ms. Cuddy was wrong because once again our ratings went down and Dirks went up. They did a version of my favorite show, Win Money or Eat Bugs. The Dirk teachers had to answer trivia questions. When they got them right, they won money. When they got them wrong, they had to eat bugs. Even I wanted to see that. No, Miss Cuddy shouted. Not again. We won't beat those dirt dorks. You just wait and see. I'll make them wish they never tangled with me. She's really upset. Here's a picture of <laughs> Miss Cuddy uh, really fuming that uh, the ratings are down again and they just can't beat those dirt dorks. Ms. Cuddy was fuming. She paced back and forth, mumbling to herself. Then she snapped her fingers. I got it, she said. You got what, we all asked. I'll tell you tomorrow morning, she said mysteriously. When we got to the studio the next morning, Ms. Cuddy was waiting outside, but the door was locked. Aren't we going to do the announcements today? Andrea asked. We need to change our format, she replied. We need to get out of the studio and into the streets. That's where the people are. Come on, let's go. Ms. Cuddy had a portable TV camera. She led us across the street. Where are we going, Neil asked. We're going to follow our noses and sniff out stories, she replied. We're going to do investigative reporting. There was just one problem. The streets were empty. All the kids had been dropped off at school. All the parents had left for work or gone home. There was nobody around. There are no stories out here, Michael said. You just aren't looking hard enough, said Ms. Cuddy. See, see this car is parked too close to the fire hydrant. 
That's illegal. I'm calling the police. It's like an inch too close, said Alexia. Yeah, what's the big deal, asked Ryan. Miss Cuddy ignored us. She pulled out her cell phone and punched in a number. Hello, police department, she said. We have a crime in progress across the street from elementary school. Send some cops over right away. And a tow truck, too. Hurry. A few seconds later, we heard a siren. Ms. Cuddy handed the camera to Michael and told me to stand in front of the car. Okay, AJ, she said. Action. Uh, my name is AJ, I said, looking into the camera. I'm standing here across the street from elementary school where there appears to be a crime in progress. At that moment, a tow truck and two police cars screeched to a halt next to us. Some cops got out and rushed over. Michael filmed the whole thing. <clears throat> uh, what's the problem? One of the cops said. This car is parked illegally, I told him. He looked at the car. It's a few inches too close to the hydrant, he said. You dragged us over here for that? The cops looked like they were going to leave. People can't just park wherever they want, shouted Ms. Cuddy. Don't we have laws in this country? Who are you? A cop asked Ms. Cuddy. I am a concerned citizen, she said. My taxes pay your salary. Criminals need to learn their lesson. Do your job. You've got to tow that car away. The cop rolled his eyes. Okay, boys, he said. Tow it. The tow truck driver attached some chains to the car and started towing it down the street. At that moment, Mr. Klutz came out of the school. What's going on, he asked. Why are you using, why, sorry, why aren't you using the TV studio we paid a million dollars for? We decided to hit the streets and do some investigative reporting, Ms. Cuddy said. Yeah, I told Mr. Klutz, a car was parked here illegally so we had the police tow it away. Mr. Klutz turned around and looked down the street. Then he looked at the empty spot where the car had been. Wait a minute, he said. That was my car you towed away. And here he's very, very upset. Uh, and uh, he's telling Miss Cuddy he's angry because she had his car towed away. <laughs> Your car? We all shouted. Oops, said Ms. Cuddy. Is this some kind of a joke? Asked Mr. Klutz. Of course not. A joke would be like, a library is the tallest building in the world because it has the most stories. Mr. Klutz totally doesn't know what a joke is. He went running down the street chasing the tow truck. It was hilarious. All right. That is chapter 10. Now we're going for chapter 11, the final chapter in this book. Oh man, can you take the tension? All right, hang on one sec. Okay, here we go. Chapter 11 is titled, Breaking News. Okay, here we go. Last chapter. <clears throat> well, I guess our investigative report didn't attract many eyeballs. Dirk School beat us again. They put on a reality show called Killer Karaoke. Kids had to sing songs while their classmates dropped water balloons on their heads. I wish I had come up with that idea. Miss Cuddy looked more depressed than ever. She just sat there with her head in her hands. Here's Jim's picture of uh, Miss Cuddy sitting there depressed. Everything she has tried has failed and they just lose in the ratings every day. I give up, I give up, she said. I'm out of ideas. No matter what we do, those Dirk dorks beat us. I quit. What, we all shouted. You can't quit, Ms. Cuddy, said Ryan. Remember what you told us, said Andrea. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. I tried again, moaned Miss Cuddy, and again. It's no use. We just can't beat those monsters. That's when I got the greatest idea in the history of the world. 
I asked Ms. Cuddy to give us one day before quitting. After school, I held a secret meeting with the gang. I told them my idea. The next morning, we were ready to put it into action. Action, yelled Alexia. My name is AJ and I hate school, I said into the mic. My name is Andrea and I love school. Now for the morning announcements. The weather today is... A big banner flashed on the screen. I'm sorry, Andrea, I said, but I have to interrupt the morning announcements. We have important news. Monsters have been spotted at elementary school. What? Andrea yelled. At that moment, the weirdest thing in the history of the world happened. A zombie ran past the camera. Well, it looked like a zombie. It was actually Neil the Nude Kid, dressed like a zombie. Emily had done a great job on his makeup. And here's Jim's picture of <laughs> Neil the Nude Kid running across the screen pretending to be a zombie to freak everybody out. What was that? Andrea shouted. It looked like a zombie to me, I said. Mr. Klutz came running into the studio. Was that a zombie, he shouted. It looked like a zombie, said Ms. Cuddy. Mr. Klutz ran in front of the camera. Lock the doors, he shouted. Nobody gets in or out of the building. Call the police. There's a zombie in our school. Then he ran out of the room. We repeat, Andrea said. A zombie has been spotted inside elementary school. Please remain calm. As soon as we have some more information. At that moment, something even weirder happened. A vampire ran across the camera. Well, it looked like a vampire. It was actually Ryan dressed like a vampire. He was growling. What was that? I shouted. It looked like a vampire, said Andrea. Zombies and vampires have invaded our school, I shouted. Don't panic. <clears throat> Let's go get the story, you guys, Alexia shouted. Andrea and I grabbed our microphones. Michael grabbed Ms. Cuddy's portable camera. We dashed into the hallway. Kids were spilling out of the classrooms. Help! Some kid yelled. It's a monster attack! The zombies and vampires are taking over! Yelled somebody else. I'm too young to die. This is great, said Ms. Cuddy. Aren't you getting all this on video, Michael? Run for your lives, somebody screamed. In seconds, the hallway was jammed with teachers and students running around, yelling and screaming and shrieking and hooting and hollering and freaking out. And here's a rare two-page spread by Jim of everyone totally freaking out because zombies and vampires have been spotted in the school. <clears throat> we are reporting the monster attack live, I shouted into the mic. We will stay on the air until this crisis is over. Andrea stuck her microphone in some girl's face and asked her if she had seen any monsters. No, the girl replied, but I heard a rumor that they're mutant alien zombies from outer space. I heard the zombies kidnapped Mr. Klutz, some other kid said. I spotted, I, I spotted Officer Spence, our school security guard. Have you seen any zombies or vampires, I asked him. Not yet, he replied, but we can't let these monsters take over the school. We'll track them down. You're a real hero, Officer Spence, I told him. Just doing my job, AJ. Everybody was going crazy in the hallways. Somebody screamed. Andrea and I ran around the corner. There was a zombie on the floor, groaning and drooling. Well, it looked like a zombie. It was actually Neil again. Here's one of the zombies now, Andrea said. We're going to get an exclusive interview. I stuck my mic in Neil's face. You've been turned into a flesh-eating zombie, I said. How do you feel? Great, Neil replied. When did you first realize you were a zombie? On Tuesday, Neil said. What are you going to do next? 
Eat the humans, Neil said. Good luck with that, Andrea told him. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us. I heard a loud bang outside. I looked out the window. A helicopter had landed on the front lawn of the school. A bunch of guys jumped out wearing body armor, gas masks, and other cool stuff. <clears throat> Come out with your hands up, monsters, one of them shouted through a bullhorn. The army, the army is here, yelled Andrea into the mic. Miss Cuddy opened the front door so the army guys could come in. Where are the monsters, one of them shouted. They went that away, I told them. Follow me, men. The army guys ran all over the school looking for monsters, but they never found any because Neil and Ryan took off their costumes. After a while, the army guys got back in the helicopter and left. It appears as though the monster attack is over, Andrea said. You may return to your classrooms now. Have a great day, elementary students. And cut, shouted Alexia. That was awesome, said Ms. Cuddy. When the monster attack was over, Mr. Klutz went from class to class to make sure everybody was okay. When he got to our TV studio, we asked him how many people had watched our station and how many people had watched the Dirk School station. Nobody watched the Dirk station, he told us. Everybody in town was watching us. Yes, Ms. Cus Ms. Cuddy shouted. Victory is ours. We're number one. We're number one. And she started dancing all over the room, yelling and laughing and screaming and shrieking and hooting and hollering and generally freaking out. And here's Jim's picture of Ms. Cuddy, finally happy that they got better ratings than Dirk School. <laughs> Man, Alexia said, Ms. Cuddy is going overboard. Why is everybody always talking about boats? Well, that's pretty much what happened. <laughs> Maybe the army will find out that the monsters were just kids dressed up like monsters. Maybe Mr. Cooper will stop throwing apples at doctors. Maybe we'll buy a thousand refrigerators and put them on the playground. Maybe they'll get a life on Mars. Maybe everybody will stop thinking in boxes and talking about boats all the time. Maybe we'll rent some eyeballs. Maybe basketball players will stop dribbling all over the floor. Maybe Ms. Cuddy will go to a doctor and get her ears checked. Maybe Andrew will stop singing songs from Annie all the time. Maybe those jerky dirk dorks will stop eating bugs and throwing water balloons at each other. Maybe Ryan will stop taking baths in his kitchen sink. Maybe we can talk elementary into giving us another million dollars. But, and read the last sentence with me, you guys. It won't be easy. We did it. We finished the whole book. Great job, you guys. I think you all deserve a round of applause. What do you say? Okay, next week, our next book is going to be a little bit different. We're going to do a, a My Weird School special next week in honor of the 4th of July coming up. It's, we're red, weird, and blue. What can we do? So we're going to start this on Monday. Okay, same time, same place. But first, how about our joke of the day? We've got to do our joke of the day, which is from Linda. I don't know where Linda lives, but this is Linda's joke. <clears throat> how do football players stay cool? Hmm? How do football players stay cool? They uh, stand by their fans. <laughs> All right, you can blame that one on Linda. All right, uh, thanks to Linda, thanks to Josh Salzman, thanks to Ryan Cunningham for our theme song. You know it, okay? Let's do it, okay? Oh man, is that man not?
All right, you guys, have a fantastic weekend. I'll see you on Monday, same time, same place. In the meantime, read like crazy and wash your hands like crazy too. Bye now.